Hello again folks and welcome back into the train room. This is my ON18 layout build that I'm working on at the moment and this is the second clip. So what I've been up to this week? Well first thing the backboards, the back frame. So I use or I've used for this 6mm MDF. I appreciate a lot of people don't like using MDF. I know it's not the greatest um, material to work with if you're cutting it. I don't. I get mine delivered um, pre-cut. So I, yeah, I use a company and they cut them to the sizes I want. And uh, yes, yeah, so I don't have to do any cutting or very, very little cutting anyway. But uh, yeah, definitely wear a mask if you're cutting this stuff because it's uh, apparently not very nice. So the first thing I did when they arrive was I coat both sides with a very, very weak PVA. Um, in the past, I've not done that. And when I've stuck um, uh, scenic backgrounds to them, uh, they bowed. Uh, same with ply, uh, same with plywood, I've had the same problem. So first thing I do, cover them in PVA. Now after that I dried, give it 24 hours. Um, I've been looking for vaccine suppliers. I use three uh, different, you know, depending on what layouts, but I, I, I use three different manufacturers. Blimey, they've gone up in price. So I, yeah, I wasn't particularly happy uh, about spending that sort of money. And, um, so I started hunt, having a little look round, hunt round. And our local market, I keep going on about a local market, I think we're very, very lucky. But they've got a, a, a retro shop, I think they call it, and it's got some posters. Um, and this was one of them. In fact, it was a fair bit bigger than this, but I thought to myself, yep, yeah, that'll do. Now, are the clouds too big? Um, oh, gosh, I don't know, are clouds too big? Is there a scale with clouds? I don't think so. Um, I just liked the brightness of it. And when I say that, the brightness, <laughs> I'm going to contradict myself here now. When I first saw it, I thought, blimey, that's a bit bright. Um, and I actually asked them if they've got anything you know, slightly less colourful. But anyway, they hadn't, so I took it. Oh, I should mention, £3.50 for this poster. Brilliant value. Very, very happy with that. So... It just shows you, I mean, I look at some things sometimes and think, oh, is it, and you know, is it gonna work, isn't it? And I just think, just go with your gut, really. So yeah, saw it, put it up, it looks a lot better up. I like it, um, nice and bright, and that's what I want. And the, the yellow rock formations, I think, are gonna stand out, you know, very nicely for me. So, MDF boards, five of them, cut up two corners and the one in the middle there is just forward two or three inches and the engine is uh, or the train is going to stop behind there we'll have a station stop and it's going to stop behind there just to give a bit of interest and I am going to have a couple more things um, moving on this layout but we'll get to them as we progress so sticking the backgrounds on um, I've made a lot of layouts and I've had a lot of disasters. So the wall adhesive, I mean, I've bought specific adhesives in the past because there's nothing so frustrating as sticking a board on and going back to it the next day and seeing air bubbles in it and goodness knows what else. I've tried PVA, I've tried, I'd say all the um, products that you can buy that are specifically made for um, attaching these. And the only one that I've really, really got on well with, and I like to call this idiot proof, that's talking about myself, is this one here, wall covering adhesive. Um, yeah, great. You coat the, uh, you don't coat the, 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 the paper, the poster, you coat the MDF and then just stick it on. It slides really easy. I've never had any trouble with um, air bubbles and yeah, gives a lovely, lovely finish. 
So that's what I've done with the backboards. And there's a very light frame there. You can just see on the right of the picture now. That is, I think it's about half inch by three quarters. That's just for the, I'm gonna have a front board on this and that will go on in due course. Um, not quite sure how I'm gonna do that yet. Well, it's gonna be like a window. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what, what I'm gonna do with that. Whether I'm gonna cut the sides square or make it cloud-like or, but we'll get to that. But that's what that's for. Um, as you can see, I forgot to do another clip and I've got carried away as I normally do. So cut some shapes um, out of the polystyrene. Uh, never worry too much about those, just get them basic. That one in the corner there, I mean, they don't, they don't look great, do they? They just, um, well, maybe if I span from over here somewhere. Yes, that one, um, Mickey Mouse's ears, whatever you want to call it. Um, I used to worry, not worry, I used to spend a lot of time trying to get those right, but now I just get the basic shape and uh, the one in the middle there is, you say, here's one I did earlier. Um, once you've got the plaster, whatever you're covering them, you know, going to cover them with, they just seem to, to me, they just seem to come alive. Now, what did I do to um, get that effect? When I first saw this product, I thought, gosh, you know, um, in use, I thought, I, I said to this guy, I said, wow, you know, you've, you put a lot of effort into that. And he said, no, I'm not. I used sculptor mold. So, coming down here, this is sculpt mold. Um, I've used this on my layouts for the last, oh, 10, 15 years. It is so, so easy to use. It sticks to anything. The only thing I would say is do mix it up in small batches uh, because it, it does go off fairly quickly. Well, it, it goes off fairly quickly to work with. Um, it does take a, a little while to dry out. It takes 24 hours to dry out before you can start painting it. But if I go around to this one here, there, this one's, that one's a better. So I've got one going at the side there. I can uh, pull away a little bit. Yeah, sticks very, very easy. That was just a piece of polystyrene. And there it is, sculptor mold. Now once that has dried, I mean, I just, just I, I put it on with, I put it on with my hand sometimes. I've, I've got like a palette knife. Um, once it's on, if you're not happy, if there's bits, don't play with it too much. Just, just stick it on, and then if you're not, if you're not ha too happy with some of the shapes, I just use um, a brush like that, and that little green tub there. Just fill it with water, and then just, just sort of dab away at it. But really, really, don't worry too much. Um, you know, don't don't fret about it. Just, just stick it on. And, um, and let it dry. It's the colour that will bring everything out. If you're happy with it, I mean, I am. I'm, that's what I use, and that's what it, that is the effect there. Now, if I just go back to the sculpt mold for a minute, on eBay, which I tend to go for most of my things, you can pay. Um, I've seen this stuff going for 30, 40 pounds a bag. Let me tell you, I just wait. There's always somebody down there that sells it for what I think is the correct price. And that's around about 12, maybe 15 pounds for a bag of that size. How many bags will it take to do this layout here? Probably one and a half, um, maybe two. But yeah, a great stuff. Great, great product to use. And yeah, I think it gives good results. So. Once it's dry, can I get those two in? Yes. Uh, once sculpt and mold's dry, the bit of the meta, well, a bit of the rock face at the bottom, uh, below the track, that's just had one coat. And I always use Woodland Scenics. Um, wow, I always use Woodland Scenics. Let's change that a little bit. I use Woodland Scenics, and that one is Yellow Orca and the other one there, the dark one, raw umber. Um, so 
this piece here I gave it one coat of the yellow ochre and once yeah once it's on I just use the same brush that I did um, I use for the plastering below and just dab it with water just so it thins it out a little bit so that the yellow is you know you, I, I don't want it all to look the same yellow so stick the paint on and then put water on it and almost like washing it off once that's dried yeah let it dry well give it a quick coat of PVA and then let the PVA dry and then go over it with a very very watered down raw umber I always put the raw umber on um, so so weak that I like it so that when you first put it on it it, it almost looks as if it isn't there because you can always go darker but um, and I, that's what I do I just build it up um, that's got one coat on it um, and I'm happy with that so that's the colorings um, yeah that I use but when I say I always use woodland scenics I must be getting older and meaner because we've got um, DIY stores there that do uh, near us that do paint sample pots now you can pick those up for about two pounds fifty so there's so so many colors now um, and yeah I've used I've just used a couple of those in the past um, and they worked absolutely fine um, emulsions or anything because it, it just soaks into this soap um, sculpting mold so so easily so I'm just looking at the time again and there's 12 minutes and I'm rabbiting on um, and I'm sorry to do that folks but that's where I've got to this week um, yeah and I'm happy with progress and I think that's about it you might have seen an aeroplane down there just in the bottom right hand corner got a bit of an idea for that on this layout if it works I should probably show you next week if it doesn't you'll never see it again anyway folks hope you like the way this layout's going and have a good week happy modeling stay safe and we'll leave it there <laughs>